What's going on guys and welcome to another Doctor Who classic review. Today I'm reviewing the first Doctor William Hartnell story, The Daleks. This is the first ever Dalek story and actually only the second ever story in the show's history. It's also in the beginning box set Like an Unearthly Child which I reviewed a couple of weeks ago. Well actually I think it was probably about a week ago because um, I'm doing like two a week now and again. Um, so yeah, the Daleks, the first ever Dalek story, the first ever alien race to be in Doctor Who actually because on an earthly child just had the cavemen, so um, yeah, definitely a big step in the show's history, but anyway, let's have a look at the back of the DVD, this is the Daleks by Terry Nation. The TARDIS lands in an alien, petrified jungle, beyond which lies a myster mysterious, deserted city. The Doctor insists on exploring, but before long the TARDIS crew all begin experiencing the early effects of radiation sickness, and then they discover that the metal city isn't as deserted as they first thought. So yeah, it's a pretty short little um, little synopsis on the back of the DVD there, but um, you know, it sets things up, it doesn't actually tell you about the Daleks. Obviously, getting this DVD kind of spoils that the Daleks are a thing um, in the story, but um, I mean, you know, whatever, they, it just kind of happens, but um, yeah, the Daleks, the first ever Dalek story, so we're going to start off like we usually do with the cast, starting off with William Hartnell as the first Doctor, William Hartnell's great in this one, um, I think he does a very good job, I'm really, really liking his Doctor the more and more I watch him, he does, once again, a very, very good job in this episode, um, there's a few little bits where he kind of gets the wrong line, he kind of stutters a little bit, but to be honest, you can kind of forgive it for the time, and you know they didn't have they didn't have the amount of retakes they they had to get you know they wanted to really get through it all in one or two takes. Um, so you know they didn't want to have to keep reshooting all the time. So you know what I think it works alright. It's not too bad. There's just a few little stars in there, but yeah, William Hartnell once again really really liking his Doctor. The more and more I watch him. With the companions, we've got Carol Ann Ford as Susan Foreman. Um, once again, I'm not the biggest fan of Susan. I think she's better in this episode than she was in Unearthly Child. In Unearthly Child, there was a lot of moments where she would just scream and be the most annoying character you've ever seen. Um, she has a couple of moments like that in this story, but she's not as bad in this as she was in An Unearthly Child. Um, still not a character that I really like very much. She's definitely one of my least favourite companions, um, Susan. But, um, you know, from what she is, she's alright. We then have Jacqueline Hill as Barbara Wright. Um, yeah, I think Barbara's pretty good in this. She has one screamy moment when she when the Dalek comes through her. But you know what, I think that's a justified moment. See, my problem is, Susan screams at times. She, first of all, her screams are really annoying and really obnoxious. And she screams at times where I don't think you would scream like that. Um, whereas Barbara, she kind of screams when the Dalek comes up to her. But that's justified. She's got a giant bloody robot like a hovering robot basically or a wheeling around robot coming towards her with a plunger and a, whi uh, a whisk um, attached to the front of it I'd be pretty scared as well so um that's justified I think Barbara Wright um, is a great character Jacqueline Hill plays her very well and then finally William Russell as Ian Chesterton like I said in my Unearthly Child video and I think I said it in my Dalek Invasion of Earth video as well I really do like Ian um He's probably my favourite of the three, definitely prefer him over Susan, probably prefer him over Barbara a little bit, um, I like having the male companions, you know, we get so many female companions that it's nice to have a male companion now and again, and I think Ian is really, really good once again, um, he has that little bit of kind of tension between him and the Doctor, which is slowly getting a bit better, but um, as he's kind of understanding what's going on, but um, yeah, Ian is a really good character, William Russell plays him really well. I'm not really going to go over many of the um, other characters. We have got Alan Wheatley as Term, ter, oh God, ter, Termimosis. I don't even know how, I'm, if I'm pronouncing that right. He's very, very good. I can't really remember exactly which character's which here, but these are basically all the files, I think. Uh, we have John Lee as Aladon, Magna Weth, Wetherall as Dione, uh, Philip Bond as Ganatus, uh, Marcus Hammond as Antidus. You know, we've got a lot of the Thars in there. I think all the Thars were pretty good and enjoyable to watch. So um, that's good as well. We also have Peter Hawkins and uh, David Graham for the Dalek voices. Those are the ones that provided the first ever Dalek voices. And you know, the Dalek voices are actually better in this than they were in the Dalek Invasion of Earth, which is the second Dalek story. I've also reviewed that one on my channel um, quite a way back. But um, yeah, I don't know. The Dalek voices in uh, Dalek Invasion of Earth, I didn't think were very good. They were very bad in some places, just didn't sound very good. They're actually better in this episode, so that's interesting to see. 
Alright, so now we're going to get onto the good stuff. Starting off with the Doctor and Ian's conflict continues. I talked about this a little bit in An Unearthly Child, uh, the first ever episode, where Ian and the Doctor had this bit of conflict going on. You know, Ian didn't know what was going on. He was trying to, uh, you know, see what was going on with the Doctor, who he was, where they were going, what was happening. Um, and that continues in this, and I just love the conflict they have between each other. It's great chemistry seeing them kind of, you know, Ian get annoyed at the Doctor, the Doctor get annoyed at Ian and kind of not listen to what he's saying. Um, just, just really, really good. I think that's enjoyable to watch. The food machine in the TARDIS, um, that was an interesting little thing. I don't know if this has ever popped up since, because obviously I haven't seen a lot of William Hartnell era yet. I haven't seen a lot of Patrick Troughton era. I haven't seen a lot of Classic Who in general. Um... It's definitely something that hasn't popped up from my knowledge in New Who again, but um, yeah, there's like a, a machine which in the TARDIS where, you know, we always wonder where does the Doctor get his food from? Um, because obviously he has to eat, and apparently they have a machine in the TARDIS which makes like these little like protein bar things, but they, they can taste like you want them to taste, so you can like have a bar that tastes like, I don't know, spaghetti bolognese or something, it's like, that's, that's a really cool little thing, um, but yeah. I don't know if it ever shows up again in Classic Who, but um, I've never heard of it before, so that's quite interesting. The Dalek City sets are very, very good. Um, yeah, for a Classic Who episode, I think the Dalek City sets are actually quite cool. The model of the city from afar, I think, looks pretty good, especially for the time. You know, this is 1963, 64, um, 63, I think, when it was recorded. So, um, yeah, really, really good. Dalek sets and then inside as well I think I think it's pretty basic but I think it looks really really good the Dalek city sets all around are very very good um, the Daleks can paralyze people instead of killing them I thought was a nice little touch a little bit weird that I don't think that really ever shows up again definitely doesn't in New Who anyway but um uh, a Dalek paralyzes Ian by just kind of shooting his leg um, it eventually come, his leg comes back around again, he gets, you know, feeling in it again, but um, I thought that was pretty cool, you know, you maybe nowadays you'd kind of think, you know, Daleks are too ruthless to have something like that, they'd just go for the kill, so um, in that respect, maybe it doesn't really work with how the Daleks are nowadays, but I can't really fault it too much, because I mean, this is the start of the Daleks, so I can't really fault it on things that happened afterwards, that's not an issue with the first episode. The Doctor, Ian, Barbara and Susan attacking the Dalek, yeah that was a really really fun moment um, of course, and they kind of lifted the cage up as well, we didn't get to see what was inside, and we wouldn't for another like 50 odd, well 40 odd years I think, um, but yeah really really nice little moment there, little action moment. Ian inside the Dalek was pretty funny with the way he was talking, yeah uh, Ian goes inside a Dalek and he is talking through the kind of Dalek's modulator, voice modulator, and but he, most of the time he's just talking normally, but the Dalek kind of, the tone of the Dalek is still coming through and I think that it just sounds really cool, him talking normally, but this Dalek voice coming out, that was very funny, some very funny moments there, and I thought all around that was a pretty cool scene, it was nice to see, you know, the first ever time we we had someone inside a Dalek, was actually in the first episode. Um, part 6's cliffhanger was good with the Thal dangling off the rock face and Ian trying to hold on. Yeah, part 6, this is a 7 part story by the way, so the longest story I've reviewed so far. Um, in part 6 cliffhanger, um, a bunch of the Thals are jumping and Ian and Barbara are jumping across this kind of ravine um, and one of them jumps but misses, kind of bounces off and then Ian's kind of the guy, the Thals dangling off the edge of the cliff into the ravine and Ian's trying to hold on because the rope's kind of tied around him. I thought that was a really really nice little cliffhanger, it was like what is Ian going to do, what is going to happen, so I thought that was really good. And then finally the final attack on the Daleks, that was a very very good little moment. Um, you know, you had the Doctor and Susan all uh, tied up, and then they got rescued, and they had this nice little attack, and I thought that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, just a really, really nice little action scene, something nice to finish the episode with. Now onto the couple of bad moments. First of all, like I have already briefly mentioned, Susan has a few whingy moments. Now, I don't feel like I can really take the episode away too much for this. I mean, this is more of a character thing than it is an episode thing. But yeah, once again, Susan just has a few moments where she's just, she's so whiny and whingy. I just, I really don't like her character. Um, you know, considering she's basically the first companion and she's the Doctor's granddaughter, basically. I don't think she actually is, but what the debate 
about that, so whatever. But um, yeah, she's she's far too whingy. She just comes across as so annoying, and I don't think I'm ever gonna like her. You know, I'm I'm interested in watching through her entire series, which is really only all of season one and a little bit of season two. But um, so she's not in the role for that long, which I'm kind of happy about to be honest. But um, I'm interested in seeing more of her. But I don't think she's ever gonna be a companion that I really like. Uh, part five is rather slow, with it mostly being them setting up to get to the fluid link back from the Dalek city. Um, yeah, so I think Ian uh, takes this fluid link from the TARDIS and he, he leaves it, or the Doctor, I can't remember who it is, they accidentally leave it in the Dalek city and they need that to escape in the TARDIS. So they have to go back into the city after just escaping it to go back in. I thought this was a bit drawn out. This is where I think, you know, we didn't, this didn't need to be seven parts long and that actually gets into one of my other parts. It's one part too long, maybe even two parts too long. If this was a six-parter, maybe even a five-parter in some ways, I think it could have got away with six parts. It would have been so much better, but sadly, parts five and a loss to say right now, part six, they're far too slow. There's not a lot going on. It's all just getting to the city again after escaping it. It feels unnecessary, and yeah, I think this would have worked much better as at least as a six-parter. Didn't need to be seven parts long. Such a weird number for it to be, but yeah, did not need to be seven parts at all. Those are really the only bad things I have to say about this episode, so taking away the whole Susan Whingy thing, which is really just an episodic thing, not really a thing about this story necessarily, my main issue, and my really only issue with this episode, is that it's just a bit too slow and it's one episode too long, and to be honest, that happens in Classic Who a lot. So all up, really, when you take out the fact that it is a little bit slow in places, I really, really do enjoy The Daleks. I'm going to give it an 8.5 out of 10. Um, I was wondering what to give this one. I gave An Unearthly Child a 7 out of 10 last time. I actually quite enjoyed it, maybe more than other people do. Um, I've noticed that The Daleks kind of gets 8s or 9s out of 10, so I thought, mm, I'm going to split the average. I'm going to go with an 8.5, which actually I think puts it in like third place. I haven't really got to show you guys a ranking, but I have been making a ranking of all the episodes that I've reviewed so far. I might show you that at some point, but I I think this is in like third place so far behind the two um patrick trout stories i've reviewed so far which i both gave 10 out of 10 so um yeah an 8.5 out of 10 for the daleks really really good episode i think it's a really good start for the daleks it's just a shame you know if it wasn't so slow i'd probably give it a 9 maybe even a 9.5 out of 10 i don't think it's quite a 10 out of 10 but i'd maybe give it a 9 9.5 out of 10 it's just sad that it is a little bit too slow but anyway, that's going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed, please go ahead, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video.